Alibaba.com is helping us expand our footprint and reach buyers in markets that we've never worked with in the past. We're very excited to be on Alibaba.com. We're sure there's a whole new demand out there for an authentic New York City cup of coffee, and this platform will connect us with those people. Since we started with Alibaba, we're getting Alibaba. increased Alibaba. daily. Alibaba.com is helping us expand like our India, footprint Germany, and Poland, reach buyers African in markets that we've it's never really unbelievable. The past. We're, we're very excited to be on Alibaba.com. We're sure there's a whole Alibaba. new demand out there Alibaba. for an authentic New York City cup of coffee. And this platform will connect us with those different channels. Since we started with Alibaba, we're getting increased daily. is helping us expand our footprint and reach buyers in markets that we've never really unbelievable. Unleash infinite business opportunities with Alibaba.com, the world's largest online B2B marketplace. With over 40 million active buyers, 300,000 daily inquiries, important business deals are being made around the world all the time using our platform. Best of all, we take 0% commission on your sales. By signing up as an Alibaba.com supplier, you keep the money you earn every single cent. Now is the perfect time to sign up. Professional onboarding services can get you started faster and with less stress than ever. Take advantage of classic Alibaba.com features, such as attracting buyers from over 200 countries and regions to your online store, where they can reach out with inquiries about your products. There's also no need to worry about language barriers. We translate your store and messages into 15 languages so you can communicate with the world with ease. Proactively net orders by browsing and responding to sourcing requests on the Request for Quotation or RFQ market. Any relationships you gain from reaching out to sourcers on the RFQ market are yours. Finally, attain exclusive data-driven insights and 24-7 customer support from our team right here in the USA. We will help guide you to success using proprietary insight gained from our over 20 years in online B2B sales. Because of these features, iBall.com has become the wholesale B2B platform trusted by U.S. suppliers. Grow with us no matter your business type. Now it's easier than ever to start selling with our new flexible payment option. Let's make it easy to do business anywhere. Sell on Alibaba.com. Alibaba has been a game changer. We need to grow internationally. And we would never have that opportunity if we did not have this platform. Taking your products into the Alibaba platform is a natural next step to go global. I always say selling on Alibaba.com is kind of like being at like five trade shows at once. We've been able to seal a lot of deals just using the platform. About 50 to 60 percent. My export business comes from Alibaba. Going from doing one order to doing 20 or 30 orders in a one or two month period, the platform speaks for itself. That's just weight and gold. I mean, when you do the, 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 a good job with Alibaba.com, buyers from everywhere around the world, they will know about you. And uh, I can now develop and export my product in over 45 countries. Once I started with Alibaba, I was able to reach people all across the world, like Tanzania and Kenya and Africa and the UK and Germany. I'm selling product in UAE, Saudi Arabia, Great Britain, and a host of others. I wouldn't have reached those customers without Alibaba.com. Hello, hello everyone, my name is Jessica Chen and I'm a marketing manager at Alibaba.com North America. Uh, today we're here for our webinar, Critical Success Factors for the Digital Marketplace, Enhance Brand Value and Drive Growth Through Sustainable Practices. Today with me here, I have Mattia Mat uh, Miglio, who is the Director of North American Business Development. And also, unfortunately today, uh, our, uh, our speaker could not join us. Um, her name is Iveta because she's sick. However, we do we are very lucky to be joined by Amarjeet Sahota, who is the founder of Ecovia Intelligence. Uh, we'll welcome him in a little bit. Um, yeah, there he is. Yay! Thank you so much for joining us. Um, 
So before we get started, first, let, let us learn a little bit more about who's joining us here today. We have like a small poll. Um, if you want to, you can join in and let us know where you're Zooming from, as well as what kind of business type you are, and also whether or not you've already registered for Alibaba.com. In addition, we also have uh, today's program is going to include information about Alibaba the group and also about Alibaba.com, as well as some case studies and also how Alibaba.com embraces sustainability and also more about Ecovia Intelligence and the wonderful work they do and also how you can join Alibaba.com if that's something you would like to do. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mattia. Okay. Jessica, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Thanks for the warm welcome and thanks to my friend Amarji Saota, founder of Ecovian Intelligence, that today is with us uh, from London. And we appreciate you joining us from across different time zones and making the time to share your insight with us today. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this insightful webinar. At Alibaba.com, our journey began in 1999 with a clear mission, make it easy to do business anywhere. Fast forward um, today, uh, we are proudly support millions of businesses across the globe, fostering the growth and success uh, one transaction at a time. As displayed on the screen, Alibaba.com is part of an expansive Alibaba ecosystem. This dynamic network has several interconnected businesses, each playing a unique and integral role in creating endless opportunities for business and consumer across the globe. From facilitating domestic trade in China to fostering international commerce, every part of our ecosystem contributes to simplify and enhancing the global trading landscape. Today webinar is very important because we will uh, go across uh, many insights uh, regarding sustainability and uh, we will uh, tell you about how Alibaba.com and Alibaba uh, Group uh, is playing uh, an important role uh, towards sustainable uh, practices. So what is Alibaba.com? Alibaba.com stands at the forefront as the leading B2B e-commerce platform for global trading. I'll be guiding you through our vision tools designed specifically for sellers and buyers across the globe. And I will give you some insights on the trends regarding sustainability. While many of you are very familiar with B2B e-commerce, it's fascinating to note that B2B e-commerce is estimated to be six times larger in volume than B2C e-commerce. This is not a small number. And for a business that wants to go global, to join Alibaba.com today is a must. In this ever-evolving landscape, Alibaba.com empowers sustainable businesses of all sizes with digital tools, global reach, and a secure environment for conducting businesses on a global scale. Our aim is enable, to, is enable businesses to not just participate in their industry with sustainable products, but to lead and win it. From certification to verified supplier, we give visibility to companies that are embracing sustainability and are producing sustainable products. Today, we will go into details about what Alibaba.com is, but I always give you some details about the trends that we are seeing in our platform uh, regarding sustainable products. But why is Alibaba.com the leading B2B marketplace? The answer lies in our numbers and the truly global scale of our operations. We connect more than 40 million buyers from 200 countries and regions across the globe. And we are proud to serve more than 200,000 companies who trust us to help them sell their products which total to over 200 million items. 
This offering span across 75 countries, encompassing a vast spectrum of uh, industries, 40 industries over 5,900 categories. And not to ensure our platform region a global out, out audience, it is available in 18 uh, languages. Now, let's go into the details of some specific about our buyer demographic uh, as uh, is uh, interests. As you can see uh, in uh, uh, this uh, slide, the geogra geographical distribution of our buyers is truly global. Some of the top countries include the United States, UK, Canada, all other European countries and Australia. We are also see substantial engagement from many countries within the European Union, Latin America and the Middle East. But what are we sourcing for? Our platform service, as I said, 40 industries and 5,900 categories, whether it's consumer electronic, machinery, fashion, beauty, and these in different markets. But now let's go into the details of today's uh, webinar and let's discuss about how Alibaba.com embrace sustainability and sustainable uh, practices. Now I wanna tell you more about our Alibaba Group Digital Circular Economy uh, Report because Alibaba Group is committed to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. And uh, within our think tank in uh, our group, uh, we have issued a research that is called Digital Circular Economy Framework uh, that is a strong pillar to support uh, the, um, um, uh, the growth of decarbonization efforts. The key to achieving net zero is in promoting both digitalization and circular economy under a new economic system that is aligned with the net zero goals set by the United Nations. And that is changing our consumption partners to attain sustainability. Our three pillar of digital, uh, digital circular economy are digitalization, circularity, and economy. Regarding digitalization, we are improving virtualization. For example, in Alibaba.com, we have uh, a new tool that is called virtual showrooms. We have data monitoring, collection, and optimization. In Alibaba.com, we have My Alibaba, that is an analytical tool that can support companies to understand buyer's behavior, uh, price, and uh, the uh, reach of their products towards our audience and connectivity. We have launched a new tool in Alibaba.com that is called Live Streaming. And these tools are scalable, towards sustainability. So our circularity gives circular input, product use extension, resource recovery, sharing platforms and product as a service. And let's go to the third pillar, economy, governance innovation for broader stakeholder participation. You have probably heard about our uh, group uh, restructuring, stakeholder economy allied with a net zero goal uh, under proper incentive based uh, system. And now let's go into one of the major trends that we are seeing in our platform that is sustainable packaging within the digital circular economy framework. Sustainable packaging and creative design is a major trend in Alibaba.com and represents a killer a key pillar to capture the full potential of circular business model. And bending circularity up front at the design stage enables longer use cycle and greater end of use recovery. Uh, probably Ethan later on this webinar will tell you that uh, last week we were joined by a major uh, design firm here in the US that is uh, promoting sustainable practices towards uh, their, uh, their members. And next week uh, on June 12th, uh, I'm proud to announce uh, a webinar with the agency Stan de Grey from, uh, from Paris. And we will have a CEO, Elie Papiernik, 
and we will discuss with him the future of packaging design and how packaging uh, can support not only sustainability, but can change uh, the consumer uh, habits towards uh, sustainable uh, uh, practices. But how a digital platform like Alibaba.com can be an, an enabler to penetration of this circular economy. First of all, digital technologies, um, um, Jessica, you can go to the next slide, thank you. Digital technologies can increase efficiency towards virt virtualization, data monitoring, collection optimization, and connecting buyers and sellers who otherwise could not connect. Imagine Alibaba.com as an online trade show, but it doesn't last for a week. It lasts all year long, and this can enable buyers and sellers to connect throughout the years, but can connect not only with a limited number of buyers that visit, for example, an offline trade show, but can visit 200 countries and region. And we have more, as I said before, more than 30 million active buyers. Active means that they have logged in in the last 30 days in our platforms. And digital platform efficiencies means less travel costs, and less uh, um, um, uh, cost uh, in terms uh, of construction and, uh, and, and so on. So this platform can be scalable and can reach circular economy sustainability, extending option for buyers and sellers globally to expand their outreach and their presence in global markets. Already, we see the potential and power of this approach of Alibaba.com through such research sharing platforms as transportation apps and home sharing services. But let's talk about e-manufacturers. We, we, I said before that we connect uh, more than 200,000 um, sellers from 75 countries and 30 million buyers across the globe but we connect uh, e-manufacturing. But what does it mean? E-manufacturers are the manufacturers that are just a click away. The digital capabilities span from online to offline. In Alibaba.com, we strongly believe uh, in an omni-channel strategy. We believe that a company to succeed in the international markets should follow an omni-channel strategy that is a diversified uh, plan of activities uh, offline and online to reach um, a, global, uh, a global scale. The best of them, the best e-manufacturers respond to buyer question promptly, communicate, do business and build trust with buyers and partners using a suite of digital tools like in Alibaba.com. They have flexible manufacturing capabilities to help realize buyers' product visions and have a digitalized supply chain strong enough to have buyers defy logistical uncertainties. In Alibaba.com, a seller and a buyer, they can diversify uh, their uh, supply chain. Uh, we offer to buyers different tools. One of our latest tools is called AliMatch, that is a service where we give to buyers uh, to reach to a, a specific uh, number uh, of uh, selected uh, um, um, sellers based uh, on, on their requests. If you want, want to know more, there is a, a QR code here. You can uh, scan it and book an appointment with our direct sales team and with our Alimesh team. So, now, let's go to the six traits of successful e-manufacturing and understanding these traits that set these businesses apart can help other sellers improve their own capabilities. For buyers, these insights can help them make better decisions when choosing supply partners. So the first trait is innovation. Successful e-manufacturer includes sellers on Alibaba.com, share a dedication to innovation. Often these companies have won global design and technology competition and secure patents. 
They also invest extensively in research and development and employ R&D teams. The second one is manufacturing. A company annual output volume is an important benchmark that convey experience and reliability. As is experienced with big brands increasingly, e-manufacturers use machine automation to improve production efficiency and ensure quality control. In fact, 80% of manufacturers see automation or smart manufacturing as key to future success. These are a result of a research that Alibaba.com has conducted towards its customer base. And the third one is flexibility. Many successful e-manufacturers offer flexible minimum order volumes, as well as the ability to customize products or materials. Mass customization is a new wave of manufacturing in which manufacturers customize products to meet customer expectation and personalization and choice. In Alibaba.com, innovation, manufacturing, and flexibility are key trends that we are seeing and that our uh, audience has uh, uh, reached out uh, as important threats towards e-manufacturing. The first one is on time delivery. The delivery time of inventory can make or break a business. Successful suppliers offer assurance that goods will arrive on time, provide real-time order tracking, and compensate you in an order is late. Alibaba.com makes it easy to find suppliers that offer this assurance with its own delivery service guarantee and with it our trade insurance. Leading e-manufacturing on Alibaba.com are also verified suppliers. To qualify as an Alibaba verified supplier, the company profile production capability, products and process control must have been inspected and assessed and verified by independent third party institutions such as SGS, Intertech or TUV in, in Germany. Storytelling. Effective communication is a critical component of B2B trade, made more challenging in a global market and online. Stephanie Scheller, a small business expert and founder of Go Disrupt, says that it's important that product description are accurate and easy to read in whatever language you are using. So these are the six threats that uh, our research pointed out as uh, very important uh, to uh, become uh, an uh, e-seller, a e-manufacturer in, uh, in Alibaba.com. But what are the mega trends shaping the global future uh, of global uh, sourcing? First of all, sustainable products. Because of a rising cost of overseas shipping, many products are now designed to be foldable and easy to fit in smaller packaging, to be more suitable for in transfer. Both buyer and seller are thinking of using eco-friendly packaging uh, materials. Once again, these are a result of uh, a research that we have conducted within uh, in Alibaba.com among our, our seller and buyer. And the second one is smart products. Jessica, go to slide 21. Thank you. Um, smart products. Next one. Uh, smart products, uh, we mean gaming devices and gadgets are in the rise, on the rise in Alibaba.com because gaming has become a way of releasing pressure especially with people spending more time indoors since the down of the pandemic. Health products, health and sustainable mega trends overlapping the growing demand for organic beauty and health products. Demand for organic sourcing is a trend line that will only get deeper over coming years, outpacing supply. To fill the supply gap, distributors will need to create or find new sources for organic products. Within Alibaba.com, a buyer can search sellers based on their certification uh, that they have. So it's very easy uh, to find a certified products in, uh, in Alibaba.com. And the last one in lifestyle products. 
Fast fashion now becomes real-time fashion. That means flexible customization of flexible manufacturing capabilities that could also cater to a retailer's need for efficient logistic and smart and inventory solutions. All of these uh, uh, future global trends were uh, searched by Alibaba.com among other sellers and uh, uh, buyers, and these are the results. Uh, so if your company is within this category, there is an important blue ocean that you can encounter in Alibaba.com. But now let's go to three um, sustainable uh, packaging uh, products that we are seeing uh, on a rise on Alibaba.com. The first is pa paper packaging. I decided to have this slide because this is uh, what a seller can see in uh, uh, my Alibaba. As I said, it's the analytical tool that a seller that becomes um, our um, seller in Alibaba.com uh, can check uh, on, on a daily basis. Thanks to this analytics, it can understand if a product uh, is uh, um, under uh, supply and can emphasize, uh, for example, in the description, the use uh, of, uh, of this product, but can also uh, check uh, the seller index uh, and the buyer index uh, and the top buyer uh, countries. For example, paper packaging uh, is extremely under supply market uh, and the top buying countries are the United States, United Kingdom, followed by Canada, Australia, and many uh, European uh, countries. The second product that I wanted to, to tell you about today is wooden and bamboo uh, packaging. As you can see, the score of under supply market is four, but there is still a huge potential in our industry overview, both on the seller index and on the product index. And the top buyer, uh, countries are the same one of paper packaging, so I don't want uh, to uh, repeat them. And lastly, biodegradable packaging. This is uh, a um, uh, pro these are products that were on the rise uh, for during the pandemic, but are seeing uh, again uh, a, um, a rise uh, in, in the recent uh, uh, months. So you can see the industry overview, the product index, uh, and the top country uh, of uh, um, from our, our buyers. And you see also here, there are some Latin uh, American countries like Colombia uh, and Chile. So, these were products, trends, and threats of our e-manufacturing and uh, uh, products uh, that are uh, rising on Alibaba.com. And I hope that my presentation uh, was interesting. Again, if you want to schedule uh, a, uh, a meeting with us, uh, there is a QR code that you can scan uh, here. And uh, you can uh, uh, also uh, reach out to us uh, in uh, the chat box. Uh, and uh, now, Jessica, I leave it back to you. Thank you so much, Mattia. So now we're going to turn over the presentation to our guest speaker today, Amarjeet, from the founder of Utopia Intelligence. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Hey, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you. I'm just going to take my screen. If you can all see my screen. Okay, so what I would like to do is to talk about some of the trends which are affecting uh, some of the sustainability trends which are affecting consumer goods. So following on from Mattia's presentation, he talked about sustainability on the Alibaba platform. I want to talk about what's happening generally in terms of uh, foods, personal care products, clean products, textiles. So some of the wider trends which are happening in the industry. So a quick introduction to our company. We've been around since 2001. Uh, we do specialist research, consulting, and events in the sustainability area. We do market research, business and sustainability consulting, seminars and workshops, and we do a sustainable food summit, sustainable cosmetic summit, in Europe, North America, Latin America, and the Asia Pacific. If you need more information, there's our website. And our next event in North America will be our Sustainable Food Summit, 
which will be in San Francisco, 24th, 25th of January. We also do a Sustainable Beauty Awards, which will be in Paris on October 30th. So I'm going to start my presentation to talk about consumers. So we as consumers are more informed about green issues than at any other time in history. And this chart by the Kantar World Panel shows the green issues which are of most concern to consumers. Now, this is a global study, and it just shows you which issues are top of mind for consumers when it comes to uh, green issues. Climate change is number one, 16.9%. You've got plastic waste, 14.8%. Water pollution, 9.7%. The water shortage, air pollution, etc. So if you look at the first one, which is in terms of climate change, what we're seeing is more and more companies they're looking at reducing their climate uh, emissions or reducing their carbon emissions. And what they're doing is they're introducing a carbon management program whereby they measure, reduce, and offset their emissions. And this chart by Trace shows the carbon management hierarchy, highlighting how companies are addressing their carbon footprint. And what companies are realizing is that most of their carbon emissions are not actually produced uh, by themselves. They're actually produced by their raw materials. And these are called scope three emissions. So the scope three emissions for agricultural based ingredients, they can generate 70 to 95% of the overall carbon emissions of the company. So what we're seeing is companies like AAK and Croda, which produce chemicals and raw materials for various industries, what they're doing is they're decarbonizing their raw material supply chains. And what they're doing is they're trying to become carbon neutral or becoming aiming to become net zero by reducing carbon emissions from across their supply chain. And what we're seeing more and more um, for products, our companies are reducing and offsetting the carbon emissions and they're marketing the products as climate neutral. And um, here are some examples of products uh, we've got in, here in Europe. We have many bananas which are now certified as climate neutral. We've got personal care brands like Seed Phytonutrients, which is owned by L'Oreal. They became climate neutral certified in 2021. And what I've also got here are some of the common certification logos that you have when your products are climate neutral or carbon neutral. And what we're also seeing here is some innovation where companies are using new technologies to capture carbon from the atmosphere and use that as feedstock to create new ingredients. So here's an example of American company Lanzatech. And what they're doing is they're using greenhouse gases from the air to produce ethanol, which is the starting point to produce packaging and cosmetic ingredients. Now, the second biggest issue, sustainability issue worldwide, is biodiversity loss. And this chart by Living Planet Index shows the global population of mammals, bird, fish, amphibians, and reptiles has declined by almost 60% between 1970 and 2012. And the number for 2022 is believed to have reached close to 70%. So the question is, what can the industry do to help preserve biodiversity or to help um, conserve biodiversity? At the recent United Nations Biodiversity Conference, uh, COP15, 195 countries signed a historic deal to halt and reverse biodiversity loss, including to protect 30% of land and water by 2030. So meeting this ambitious target will involve nature positive production, which means producing products which involve protection, management and restoration of nature. Now, the question is, what can you really do there? And essentially, it's about ethical sourcing of raw materials, which are used in food, personal care products, cleaning products, textiles, etc. And a, a great example of this is the French cosmetics company, the L'Occitane Group. In September 2021, it announced its nature positive biodiversity strategy. And it stated all of its plant-based ingredients will come from nature positive sources. 
and its range of key ingredients will be made according to organic, fair trade, or regenerative practices. Now, another thing which companies can do is to join the Union for Ethical Biotrade, whose mission is to promote sourcing with respect to biodiversity. In 2018, it launched its certification scheme with Walida and Natura Brazil, the first companies with certified products. And I've got examples of the products over here showing the certification scheme, how they've got products which are uh, biodiversity friendly and they're sourced, the ingredients are sourced with respect to nature. So there are a lot of other schemes which are emerging. Here's another scheme, the Wildlife uh, Friendly Enterprise Network, and they've got the certified wildlife friendly label, as you can see on the top corner and on the bottom over here. And uh, today, this covers over 30 million hectares of wetlands, forests, and grasslands. And you've got products which are textiles, foods, cosmetics, and cleaning products which are having this label. And I've got an example of the Salic brand in the UK and the Fireface coffee brand on the left. And what we're seeing here is some innovation. So, um, Palm oil um, is linked to deforestation in Southeast Asia. And uh, what we saw this April was the New York-based company C16 Biosciences. They launched palmless, which is a multifunctional oil that's made from yeast, and it's a replacement to palm oil in personal care products. And that was launched just a few months ago. Now, another big sustainability issue is single-use plastics. Uh, as Mattia said, there's been a lot of trends here in terms of sustainable packaging, but just to give you some context, about 8 million tons of plastics enters the ocean each year. And according to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, there'll be more plastics than fish in the ocean by 2050. So the question there is, what can we do to move away from single-use plastics? The first thing is to use packaging materials which can replace plastics and we've got some examples here from the food industry uh, the uk company vegware they're producing plant-based compostable packaging as you can see on the left a lot of companies which are doing organic fruits and vegetables and salads they're using bioplastics which are made from corn or cellulose or from um, sugarcane and that's biodegradable packaging and in the beauty industry, you've got Lush. They've got some innovation where they're using cork uh, to house the shampoo bars. Then the New Zealand brand Ethique, they're using cardboard packaging for its uh, waterless cosmetics. What we're also seeing here is some brands are becoming plastic neutral. So similar to the carbon footprint, what they're doing is they're measuring the plastic impact of their products. They're reducing the plastics in their packaging and they're offsetting their plastic footprint by taking plastics out from the environment. And this is a certification scheme by Repurpose Global. You've got American brands like Butanic Beauty, Redbud Suds, and Safe Catch, which have certified their products as plastic neutral. So again, it's a very similar concept to climate neutral, carbon neutral, whereby you're measuring your footprint you're offsetting and reducing, and you're making a claim that your products have got zero plastic impact. And another trend, what we're seeing in retailing is to move towards unpackaged products. So we're seeing this for food products across the world, whereby you can go to organic food shops, natural food shops like Whole Foods Market, bring your own containers, and you're paying for the volume of product that you buy, but not the packaging. But the same trend is now going towards cleaning products and personal care products, whereby you can use refillables and you're paying for the weight of the product and not the packaging. Now, we're also seeing innovation related to the circular economy, and that's a move away from linear models whereby products are made so that they have end of life considerations that the nutrients and the packaging finds another life at the end of the life cycle. And a good manifestation of this trend is upcycling. And this is when waste ingredients, typically from the food industry, are found a new application or a new purpose. 
And two examples here would be Toast Ale, a UK uh, company which makes beer from surplus bread. And then you've got the Dutch company, Coast and Beet Company, which uses waste from sugar production to produce food and, and cosmetic ingredients. And in North America, you're seeing more and more ingredients which are being certified by the Upcycled um, Food Association. And in the cosmetics industry, the same thing is happening. Ingredients, waste materials are finding a new life as cosmetic ingredients. You've got the Taiwanese brand Hero Right on the left. They're using coffee grounds, goji root berries. Um, they're using spent grains in their products. The UK brand Dr. Craft, they have natural dye, which is made from blackcurrant pulp, and Upcircle Beauty, which is using waste materials from fruit and vegetables in its products. So I want to finish by giving you the future trends, what we expect to see in the future. The first thing is there's going to be more and more sustainability schemes and standards, apart from organic, fair trade. We're going to see more and more labels like carbon footprint, water footprint, climate neutral, biodiversity, et cetera. You're going to see new technologies spurring innovation. I've given an example of carbon captured molecules. You're going to see more and more biotechnology and new technological processes to make ingredients and packaging materials. There's going to be a greater emphasis on biodiversity after the COP15 summit, which will encourage companies to become more ethical in the way they source the ingredients with greater, with greater concern for biodiversity. We're going to see new product formats um, launched in the next few years. So already we've seen things like waterless cosmetics, shampoo bars, sustainable deodorants and refillables in the food industry. And we're also going to see a change in consumer behavior. The way we buy, use and dispose of products will have to change if we're going to make the planet more sustainable. So we see the way forward is thinking about not just creating a net, reducing negative impacts, but creating positive impacts. And a good, good example of this is the cradle to cradle design approach that was made by William McDonoghue and Professor Michael Bronkart. It's about designing products for circularity so that nutrients don't end up in landfill or in the oceans, but they end up recirculated or re reapplied. And we're seeing more and more products which are being certified according to this scheme. You've got the detergents brand method um, in the USA and North America. You've got Garnier. Uh, they were the first mass market brand to have cradle to cradle certified products uh, a few years ago. And as part of this positive movement, we expect to see moves towards products which have a positive impact on the environment. So we're already seeing the FSC and PFC certification in the paper and packaging industry. What we're seeing is some innovation here, whereby we're seeing companies launching new products which have a positive impact on the environment. And on the bottom, I have the Dutch Indonesian startup called Forest Wives. And what they're doing is they're taking wild harvested food ingredients and cosmetic ingredients from the Borneo rainforest. And its mission is to reforest the Borneo rainforest, which has um, almost half has been lost in the last 50 years. And as part of this movement, regenerative agriculture is gaining momentum. Um, the regenerative organic certification was introduced in 2018. It's considered organic plus as it improves soil fertility and as a social impact. Today, over 300,000 hectares of farmland is certified. And you're seeing products like this cereal, Nature's Path Organic Cereal, which is marketed as regenerative organic. And this is the way we expect the industry to move. It's going to be having more sustainable products, but not just having reduced negative impacts, but having positive impacts from the examples which I've just given. So in my presentation, I've highlighted some of the major trends for sustainability and some of the innovation which is happening. I'd now like to pass it over back to Jessica. Well, hello, thank you so much for, okay, hi. Um, thank you so much for your presentation, Amarji. I thought there were a lot of really interesting informations and trends that you revealed through your presentation. And thank you so much for taking the place of Iveta and hopefully she is fine. <laughs> so uh, next up for our presentation, we have 
Ethan Case, who is an enterprise account executive at Alibaba.com. Let me share the screen. Okay. Here we go. Thanks so much, Jessica. I really appreciate being on here today, able to connect with these potential clients in this webinar format. Always good to get an extra connection in there. Um, my name is Ethan Case. I'm an enterprise account executive for Alibaba North America out of our New York City office. Been with the company a couple years now and have been here for a lot of growth. Certainly an exciting time to be connected with Alibaba. Um, I'm going to go through uh, a number of things about actually selling on our platform, what it looks like, how you can get into it, if it's for you. And then also, if you do want to connect one-on-one -on -one for a product demo, I think uh, we can throw my calendar link in the chat there at some point during this presentation. All right, Jessica, next slide. So. Alibaba, as you most likely know, and Matia mentioned earlier, is the leading B2B uh, e-commerce platform worldwide. We were established in 1999 as more of a, a directory for Chinese businesses to connect with global buyers. We have certainly grown over the years into a fully fledged e-com platform. We have trade assurance, escrow, logistics, payment, uh, Pretty much anything that a self-respecting e-com platform would have, we can facilitate. However, at the end of the day, keep in mind, we are more like an online trade show than anything else. The buyers are sourcing, not direct-to-consumer purchasers. So it's more about long-term business-to-business connections that you can make through Alibaba, take it offline, have that connection for years down the line. Uh, that's our goal here, not necessarily one-off sales. And we've done this over the course of the last 20 years by allowing buyers to purchase both on platform and off. There's few other B2B platforms that do allow fully international sales and allow you to take it offline. Right, next slide, please, Jessica. So I mentioned earlier how much Alibaba has grown. We have um, started with just a pretty much a listing directory. Now, of course, we still have that storefront. As you can see, we have listings uh, like a typical e-com platform. We have your Alibaba.com company profile. You can kind of trade your business card with potential buyers. Um, that is one of the greatest values to our system is these business cards that you can trade with the buyer's offline contact info. Plug it into your CRM, again, treat it any other paid lead source or trade show interaction. That's how you should continue working on Alibaba. We, of course, have the search results. You can type in any keyword category. It'll pull it up. Um, we have the product listings, and these are uh, pretty unique in terms of our organic algorithm. So the account management from a North American uh, uh, account here is pretty high level to walk you through all of these aspects, how to list. We'll actually post a bunch of your products for you. So fear not, it's, a, it's pretty complicated, but we will be there every step of the way with you. We also have keyword advertising as any e-com platform would. This is an additional cost working on Alibaba. However, it is uh, much more economical than most people expect. Given that we are a global platform, we charge a, a global going rate for online marketing, uh, usually generally between 50 cents and, and a buck 50 per click. However, we have a couple of different systems. Would love to get into it more on a one-on -on call if you would like to delve into that side of things. We also have communication tools allow you to connect in 18 different languages directly within our chat system, helping uh, you kind of source and, and sell globally without any uh, th anything getting lost in translation. One of my favorite parts of the platform and undervalued, I would say, is the RFQ marketplace, a request for quotation marketplace. This is where the buyers are posting what they're looking for. You can then go through as a seller on Alibaba, uh, type in your keywords or just have uh, the e keyword saved in the system to send you anytime someone does add a relevant RFQ. You can uh, you can see that. You can quote them directly within the platform from your listing di directory. As soon as you quote, you do get their offline buyer details as well. So just as with the inquiry method of sales on Alibaba, you're welcome to either work that through Alibaba or take it offline. However you are used to doing business, you can continue doing it that way. 
real-time translation, payment and order confirmation, financing, logistics. We, we, we do really have it all. Um, we can certainly delve into it deeper on a one-on-one -on -one session as well. But long story short, we have escrow, we have financing, we can help you with logistics. Uh, we truly do make doing business anywhere easy. Thanks, Jessica. Next slide. So Alibaba, it, it's really about who you're trying to connect with. We can help you globalize your business, or if you're really trying to connect with U.S. buyers, European buyers, North American buyers, benefit of having the largest B2B buyer base on the planet is that you can certainly pick and choose. If you do want to connect globally, you can just leave your settings as they, the, the preset settings on Alibaba, because um, we are a global platform. Um, and that can help you reach out to anybody through the RFQ marketplace inquiry. However, if you do want to restrict it for any reason, say you only sell within North America, you can make it so any inquiries that uh, do come in go straight to your spam. We do want you to be able to see those inquiries. Say you get a you know massive order from you know the South African government or something for if you're a, a textile company. Um, actually, one of my clients recently did. Um, he was able to see that because it was still coming through and follow through with that order. Uh, very helpful, even if you're not typically working internationally or globally, to at least see those large orders come in. We have other customers that really only want to work domestically, um, and they typically do this in, in a number of ways, both by geo-blocking certain locations, as well as using paid marketing to focus in on these geographic locations. Um, you can do it by country, continent, or you can delve even further into on-platform buyer behavior, whether that's a fast response buyer, a, a high value buyer, buyer that's been on Alibaba for a while. So whether you're trying to sell globally within North America, within the US, our, our system is able to be modified according to your business needs. Thanks, Jessica. In terms of the buyers and, and their presence on Alibaba, the United States certainly makes up our, our largest buyer group. About 25% of individual buyers on the platform are from the U.S. However, a little bit higher purchasing power from the U.S., as you might imagine, makes up about 40% of sales volume on the platform in terms of transacted amount. Um, so certainly the U.S. is our most important buyer base. However, again, if you are able to work internationally, globally, it's money on the table. We are a global platform. UK comes next. As you can see, Canada is third. Mexico is fifth. So North America is very popular on, on our platform. Many suppliers do just sell to North America. Some of my more successful suppliers actually just sell to North America. One thing to note here, um, China buyers do not show up in this data. Um, we can't share that data. So it's uh, anecdotally a, a very, very hot um, buyer base, depending on your category, particularly for food and beverage, health and beauty, a number of others. Um, some of the, the largest single orders I've heard transacted did come from China buyers. So certainly, if you do want to be working into Asia, selling into Asia, into China, it's a, a great opportunity. However, we just can't show that here. Um, Europe in general, though, Australia, uh, South Korea, um, and about 100 and 195 or, or so more countries and regions around the world, we do have buyers in. Uh, again, we do uh, make selling globally easily. So in terms of the uh, products that you can sell on Alibaba, um, it's uh, pretty vast, whatever whatever trends are in existence happen on Alibaba as well. Um, we are more of a, the, the, the open market, you know, it's not a, a microcosm that only is relevant for Alibaba. Anything you can think of that would sell well offline, most likely sells well on Alibaba.com. Next slide, please. Top trends, as you can see, vehicles, transportation, consumer electronics, food and beverage, health and medical, tools and hardware, et cetera, et cetera, as you can see there. Um, however, 
one thing that I, I do like to focus on in my one-on-one -on -one sessions is figuring out which products are going to sell well from a U.S. perspective, not just on Alibaba.com. So while consumer electronics do sell pretty well, it might be better to focus on something like food and beverage, health and medical, something that has a, a one-up from the U.S. market, or if you have, and we'll get into this in, in a moment, but if you have brand IP, um, product IP, anything of the sort that can really help you specialize, that's what we're looking for. So it is a, a large supplier base as well. So I like to focus in with my clients on what makes them special, what helps them stand out and then run with it. As you can see, we list pretty much any product, long as it's legal in any category, but it's my job to help you through and figure out which ones are going to sell best. Next slide, please. To make sure that happens, there's a, a number of factors that I like to focus on. Um, and as you can see here, having some leg up typically means brand IP or product IP, some sort of OEM or ODM capabilities, white label, private label, or on the flip side, particularly the case for food and beverage and health and beauty, having FDA certification, being organic, um, you know, just having more of an eco-friendly uh, standpoint. You know, these are aspects that do help you stand out on Alibaba. And um, I'll, I'll help you kind of promote those uh, effectively on our platform. Additionally, supply chain relationships can sometimes be an incredibly beneficial leg up. Um, we do have tons of suppliers on Alibaba. However, not all are very well connected. If you have those connections with logistics companies, with you know manufacturers uh, here in the US, around the world, um, that's quite effective. Uh, one of my most successful clients has a network of about 2,000 manufacturers that he leverages. Uh, so uh, whatever it is that you can, you can put into this to stand out, from the crowd, that's certainly what you should be focusing on. And I'll help you delve into that in a one-on-one -on -one session. Next, please. We're gonna go through a number of case studies now that do focus on that last slide on figuring out different, different suppliers that really focused on brand IP or, or product IP to really leverage our platform well. Um, next slide, please. Concession King, one of our more successful U.S. suppliers, they, of course, uh, focus on brand IP. They're a distributor, wholesaler of pretty much any gas station supplies from, as you can see, um, you know, candy to uh, some, uh, you know, laundry detergent to rolling papers, anything that you would find in a gas station. Uh, they have leveraged particularly well on Alibaba, doing very well in the last couple of years. Um, recently connected with a Taiwanese 7-Eleven type store that has thousands of stores all over Taiwan for these large, large orders. That is the goal here. While many sales on Alibaba will be one-offs, uh, my job is to present your products in a way that it can connect with these uh, long-term wholesale accounts like that, uh, like that convenience store in Taiwan for recurring sales. Concession King is doing, again, very, very well, been working with our head of account management for a number of years now. Um, that is one of the greatest aspects of selling from the United States is this personalized account management. Um, I can tell you that you will be successful if you work with us, uh, certainly. Let's see. Next one, please, Jessica. My grandfather actually started a company called Slam Bam the Candy Man back in the 70s, and they actually shipped gourmet high-end chocolate throughout the country and throughout the world. That business shuttered in the early 80s, 90s because he wasn't able to grow it, and it really showed us, oh wow, our business has evolved, and now we're going to reimagine and cater it to a new vision and a new storyline. Candy is sweet, it brings people together, it makes people happy. So if you walked into a gas station or a grocery store, from candy to refrigerated items, we can be that e-commerce business for their specific needs. We really consider ourselves a modern day Willy Wonka in today's modern era. I started Chop the King with my friend Sam. I was kind of born out of our 12 year relationship. It was fun when we got our first couple sales. We celebrated, we were very excited and said, okay, we gotta grow and keep seeing our sales compound month after month. 
One of the ways we were able to do that was we reached out to Alibaba.com to create a business profile and that has allowed us to engage and communicate with other B2B companies throughout the country and internationally. I get really excited on that keyword search when customers on Alibaba.com are looking for candy or Hershey's. I pick up the phone and call Sam and say, hey, we got this new lead from Alibaba.com. It just makes my day. Growing from doing one order to doing 20 or 30 orders in a one or two month period, the platform speaks for itself. That's just weight and gold. We're cultivating and growing relationships with these companies that we would have never had exposure to if it wasn't for Alibaba.com. When we bring on new leads or new customers by way of some of the software that we're leveraging on Alibaba.com, we try and qualify our customers within a 24-hour period. That's one of the largest benefits we've seen, that conversion speed to market of new customer acquisition. Any advice I would give to someone that's new onto Alibaba.com is to ask a lot of questions, rely on their technical support, they help us every step of the way, and we see that growth pay dividends in our sales from international traffic. Giving the opportunity to have 10 years working with my grandfather, and I think he'd be very proud that we're carrying on his legacy. He would say, Adam, the world is your oyster. You have to fail to be successful. We've grown so much by way of the support from Alibaba.com to position us to be a larger player on the marketplace. Great. So moving on a little bit, Totally Products specializes in a, a quite different way. They offer uh, manufacturing white label, private label for, um, for supplements. They have been on the platform for quite a while, as you can see, about nine years, and have really cornered um, both the, the, the white label, private label side of things to differentiate themselves as well as the approval selling from the US, you need to be FDA approved. Um, well, not necessarily the products themselves uh, in supplements, but the the, the company. Um, just having that document on your Alibaba profile will give you a leg up over the Chinese suppliers or Vietnamese suppliers or French suppliers selling similar products. Um, again, anything that helps you stand out, and that's what we're looking for here. You can go to the, the next one, yes. I'm fortunate because I, I built a nice business where I have that freedom to choose how I want to spend my time. Like I said, I'm a new father. I'm, I'm just so appreciative to uh, have the time to spend with my son. And, uh, and, I, and I take that religiously, you know, so I, you know, work-life balance is so vital. Wow, oh, I just missed it. I didn't take a picture, but it's okay. All they have to do is bring an idea to me. I turn that idea into reality. Not only do we have the product, we have a design team that can create the look and feel they're looking for. It's really a, a full-scale white label option for them from start to finish. Right? You know, we, and then we take their dream and we deliver it to their doorstep. I call myself white glove service, and that's really what we are. We're a white glove service. And that's really the American dream. I mean, that's why platforms like Alibaba, I don't want to sound like a commercial, but basically platforms like Alibaba give you that avenue to add wealth and add income and traffic. And I give the end buyer the ability to test my stuff at a very economical rate. I always say selling on Alibaba.com is kind of like being at like five trade shows at once. It's, it's like uh, trade shows cost anywhere from five to $15,000. And if you're lucky, you might find one good buyer at every trade show or every other trade show. On Alibaba.com, you might find two, three, four good buyers a week. Honestly, the, the best advice I could have given to myself is take more chances. For the most part, a very conservative person. That's why I felt like testing Alibaba at a conservative price was well worth the money. Of course, that paid dividends 100 times over. So don't hesitate. If you have an idea, do it right away. Don't waste time. Great. So another way to uh, differentiate yourself is to be someone like Alco Prevention. They focus on IP for their products um, and got on Alibaba about 11 years ago. 
had a bit of a slow first year because this was back before Alibaba North America was established. So they had to be working through our headquarters and uh, outsourced account management. However, once we did get to them and help them set up their storefront in an in a, in a effective manner, they really did see a lot of sales coming in from our system. In particular, I believe it was 2014 in France, they passed a law that made it so all cars need to have a uh, a, a alcohol uh, back level tester within the car somewhere. Um, they saw being on Alibaba, having that connection to international sales, their sales skyrocket. They would not have been able to take part in this if they hadn't been with us, given that previously they had no international outreach. So again, another great company and love to see that video, Jess. Ah, I guess no video. Um, this is Mobshaw Group. They uh, are a six-year seller on Alibaba, distributor, wholesaler, carpeting, uh, based out of Illinois. They, I think, work mainly within the U.S., but have grown internationally as they've been on Alibaba for a number of years now. Um, and I believe, do we have a video for this, Jess? No, I don't think so. Um, anyway, we do have a full directory, a YouTube page. If you do want to check out more case studies, we have some of the webinars are posted on there. Really great resource. If you have some extra time and want to delve through that, I believe we can post that link in the chat as well. What's the next one. So how to start selling on Alibaba. Um, first off, you want to talk to me or one of my my colleagues here in our North American sales office. We'll help you through the sales process, uh, the selection process. We do really want to make sure that we only work with the suppliers we know are going to be successful on Alibaba. So my process always starts with a short call just to confirm that the business models are aligned, that we can actually help you grow your business. Once that is confirmed, we'll go to an actual demo. Um, really delve into it, see if you like our system from there, sale, and then move you over to business verification. Um, BV is pretty important in order to sell anywhere, but also particularly here in the United States. So we take it quite seriously. All of our suppliers go through this process, putting in articles on corporation, just information about their business, et cetera. This is not public information. This is just uh, to get listed on Alibaba. Um, but I will help you through that uh, every step of the way. After business verification, you will be connected with your account manager. Depending on uh, which package that you go for, we have different levels of account management. However, um, all of the packages I recommend do include local account management in-house from a New York City office. Um, that way I can communicate effectively with them. I will always be available as a secondary level uh, of support as your account executive. If anything goes wrong with your account manager, I can straighten it out. If there's any admin issues, ad related questions, renewals, stuff like that, I'm always available. However, your account manager will be there every step of the way for the day to day. I recommend at least biweekly meetings with them for the first couple months. Make sure everything is in line before you're off to the races. Um, as you can see from Toya's quote here, that's really what differentiates listing from the United States versus listing from, say, Vietnam on, on Alibaba is our personalized uh, account management. We go above and beyond to make sure that you will be successful dedicating to each client. We've been doing this quite a few years now and developed a very effective training program, account management program. We'll take care of you. Next slide, please. So. Reasons to join Alibaba. Of course, we are the number one choice for business to business. We're the largest B2B platform worldwide. And we really, we make it easy to connect either globally or domestically with that buyer base. That is the benefit of having the largest B2B buyer base on the planet. You can really focus in on your desired buyer groups. Um, also, our offline sales that, that allow you to take that buyer offline with 0% commission is the reason that we've been able to grow to the point we are um, today. Most e-commerce platforms, uh, they, they make you check out using their platform, their service. 
their payment system, and they also won't give you the buyer details. If you have a, a large order that you know ships to the buyer, they're not at their warehouse, how do you get in contact with them on other e-commerce platforms? For us, we give you their contact info, give them a ring, maybe they're around the corner, corner they'll show up to the, the warehouse and, and make that sale. Um, actually, real example there, I had a, a client that came from another e-commerce platform that did not get the buyer contact details for a massive order, had to ship back, lost about $10,000. That's when he reached out to us. So great leg up, you can take it offline. High traffic volume, of course. We have over 300,000 daily inquiries, um, which is uh, spread across all categories, of course. But uh, one of the, the parts of my demo is to delve into the data, see the inquiries, the impressions, the clicks for your particular products. So certainly, if you are interested in taking this further, I would love to get you that data. Um, you can generate leads from anywhere. Course. We have buyers in over 200 countries and regions uh, around the world. We did go through that uh, that buyer profile earlier, with the U.S. being our top, um, U.K., Canada, Australia, Mexico. But it, it really, I've seen orders come in globally and, and quite large orders, sometimes in the millions of dollars from um, from you know government organizations, aid groups in Africa, et cetera, et cetera. So um, really, it, it does allow you to connect with almost anybody anywhere. As long as it's a legal interaction, then we'll facilitate it. There's really no limitations. 24-7, uh, 365, online trade show, not no time, space, limitations, etc. The amount of time and effort that you need to put into Alibaba is a fraction and funding of what it would take to have this same level or anywhere near this level of visibility through brick and mortar stores, through trade shows, through other platforms. The traffic is the real value here, the eyeballs on your products. We're extremely cost effective. Um, we will get into packages in, in a moment. We have packages ranging from $2,000 a year up to $20,000 a year, I believe now. Um, however, if you've worked on other e-commerce platforms, you know that that is uh, a very reasonable amount, particularly given that we don't take commission. Um, I believe the average successful seller on the other major e-com platforms spends about $80,000 a year. So it's a very cost-effective model uh, for your business to connect with business-to-business -business buyers as well. These aren't tiny sales here, very large, sometimes ranging into the multi-millions of dollars. Lastly. It's your business, your operating model. We will adapt our system according to your business needs. We're never going to tell you, hey, you have to work on, on Alibaba. You have to use our payment system. You have to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, we facilitate too many business-to-business -business models to be... Um, to be uh, stringent about that. That's one of the reasons your account manager, your local account manager is so important, given that the, the Alibaba universe is so broad, you need someone to help you customize our system according to your business needs. Thanks, Jessica, next one. Cost structure. Um, we have that self-service model, the basic at $19.99, uh, the standard at $34.99, premium at $99.99, and then verified supplier, number of different options ranging to, uh, I think, $19,100. Uh, and the, the difference between these two between these packages is primarily level of account management. You look at that base, the basic package, it doesn't have anything. That's if you are extremely knowledgeable about e-commerce, you've maybe had an Alibaba store in the past, or you just want to get a taste of it, see if you want to then upgrade afterwards. It's a great starting point. However, uh, again, I cannot stress how much that local account management will help you in your onboarding process, expedite that, get to ROI positive. Um, so the two packages that I typically start my clients on are either standard or premium. The difference being essentially level of account management. The standard has account managers. You just can't meet with them as, as often. You also, uh, they won't post as many of your products for you. I believe the standard is 50 products posted right now. Uh, by the account management team. And uh, that is uh, quite a lot. You know, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to post a product that will actually trend well organically. So we'll do uh, 50 for you on the standard and 200 on the premium. So, you know, make sure to get in on either one of those packages to start. However, 
if you do have the 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 funds, uh, I do always recommend the verified supplier. It's our best package. We send SGS out to verify your facility, upload the certifications into our system. You also get listed not only on the products tab on Alibaba, but the manufacturer tab on Alibaba. So if someone wants to skip the distributors, uh, you know, skip the resellers on Alibaba and go straight to a manufacturer, that's really your leg up. If you are a manufacturer, if you do have high volume manufacturing potential, I do highly recommend the verified supplier package. Um, however, it is typically a upgrade thing for year two. So um, if again, if you have the funds for it, it's best to do it year one, but you know, it's a, a little bit hard to get that funding approval. So generally I start with either the standard or premium and work up to the verified. Thanks, next slide. So if you do want to schedule the consultation, feel free to scan this QR code. Um, they'll connect you with someone on my team. We can uh, divvy it out accordingly, according to your business needs. Everyone specializes on the team. So depending on your category, we'll connect you with the correct uh, the sales rep here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ethan, for your for like explaining Alibaba.com to everyone. Uh, now we're going to move into a quick uh, Q&A session with Ethan, Mattia, and... Amarjeet. Let's see. Um, so, um, for the, um, so I feel like a lot of the questions we have right now all seem to be pertaining to how to use, how to use um, Alibaba the platform. So the first one says, um, is asking about whether or not there's free delivery on the platform. I can take this one, Jessica. It, it sounds like this might be a buyer question. Um, if you are trying to purchase on Alibaba, this might not be the webinar for you. This is mainly focused on, on sellers um, and to sell on Alibaba. That being said, delivery is entirely up to the seller. Um, if they want to include that in the cost of the product, more than welcome to. If they want to add that on afterwards, if they want to make the buyer pay for it, all these will be represented in the INCO terms that you use to post your products, um, just as if you were selling at a trade show. Okay. Um, and then there's another question about whether or not, um, whether or not they, uh, it says I am a, there's a question from a person named Julia that says, I am a consulting company that manages many types of businesses. So need all kinds of manufacturing, marketing, website domains, et cetera. It's like, and is wondering, I'm, I think she's wondering how Alibaba could fit into all of this. Sure. So if you're trying to list products or represent the different manufacturers that you do have, that's actually one of my favorite models. Um, if you look at uh, 330 Trading on Alibaba, it's one of my more successful clients. Um, that's their model. They have manufacturers, different companies that they represent that all kind of pitch in to their yearly membership, do very well on the platform. So if, if I understand this right, and you're looking to represent your manufacturers and suppliers on Alibaba, then certainly this is a, a very effective model. I believe there was also a follow-up part of that about CBD. Um, no active psychoactive ingredients on Alibaba. Um, we can't do ingestible CBD, certainly topical CBD. Um, if you do have topical CBD products, let's certainly discuss. It's an amazing category on Alibaba. Um, just keep in mind, nothing ingestible, particularly on the THC side of that. Okay. And there's also another question here about marketing campaigns, which I think we can probably actually use to talk about some of the marketing tools on the platform and what you can use to stick out on the platform. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and it, it, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one demo to figure out how it would work for your particular products, certainly. But uh, in a nutshell, we have two different uh, marketing uh, strategies on Alibaba. We have a cost per click system that's based, I think, off the 2017 Google keyword system. So it's, if you've used that before, I think most uh, CPC systems are based off that. So it's pretty similar. You can focus in, you can set your daily budget for it. You can set your buyer demographics, who you're trying to connect with, geo target. If you're trying to connect with uh, high value buyers or buyers that have been on Alibaba for a very long 
long time. You can set premiums on that and then it will market it to those particular buyers. One thing to note though, is that uh, with my personal clients, I don't like to rush this system. I don't think there's any point putting paid marketing on unoptimized organic leads. So I spend the first three to six months with my clients, making sure that all the, all, all the listings are fully optimized organically before we would ever take a look at this system. I found that if you jump the gun on it, the increase in impressions and conversions just isn't going to be cost effective versus if you wait till you fully optimize organically, you'll see uh, uh, exponentially larger returns on that. Secondly, we have what's called premium sponsored ads. This is a, a, a very unique system that I don't believe any other platforms that I've seen has. You're actually able to reserve the top listing for a keyword. Now, only one supplier at a time can reserve that listing. Um, for instance, my client uh, Cargill, they have the keywords beef, uh, chicken, Cargill, a couple others reserved. Even if someone were to filter for a Chinese supplier, Cargo would always come up um, at a, a pretty ridiculously low cost. I think beef was about $1,000 for the year. Chicken was, um, I think, $1,200. That's probably a $80,000, $100,000 keyword if you try to get the top listing on, on our competition. So certainly extremely cost effective. You're able to reserve that for, I think, six months or a year. Um, but both really effective models for marketing. I generally recommend a pretty even split in terms of funding for that. A typical, uh, uh, what we call KWA or the cost per click uh, marketing might be between 200 and 700 a month, probably averaged at 500. Um, we do give you credit upfront to test it out, see if it helps. Um, so keep that in mind. On the standard package, you get $500 of credit. On the premium, you get 1,000 to, to try these systems out. But again, it's a extremely low cost marketing system, nothing like you would expect to see from our competition. Thank you, Ethan. We actually have a question for Ecovia that says, um, how does Ecovia help business owners seize um, opportunities and sustainability? Well, uh, we can help you by identifying trends, but also market access. Uh, sometimes companies want to find distributors or they want market information to go, say, to the US market, Canadian market, or European market. And we provide market information, data, as well as contacts like distributors or importers. Um, if you need more information, our website, um, www.ecoviaint.com or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Oh, that's really great. Thank you so much, um, uh There's also another question from Matia, like how, how can U.S. business owners leverage Alibaba.com to expand their business to make it more sustainable? Oh, wait. Is that said? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. As, as I said, um, we have different programs. Uh, Ethan I mentioned the Verify Supplier. The Verify Supplier is a membership, is an annual membership uh, where a third party inspects and assets uh, the uh, manufacturing plan. In this way, a Verify Supplier is uh, very easy uh, to be found uh, in our platform. Also, um, when uh, a seller uh, posts a product, can uh, also insert their certification that this product has. So a buyer can easily um, identify uh, the, uh, the products uh, that have a certain certification, but also uh, the company can, uh, uh, in terms of company manufacturing plan and, and so on, can post uh, uh, different uh, uh, certification like uh, uh, the uh, ISO uh, certification. Uh, moreover, uh, in, if uh, a company is uh, sourcing uh, uh, for uh, products, uh, our uh, diversified uh, um, uh, sellers can uh, uh, for sure uh, find uh, the right uh, uh, products or solution for the business uh, uh, to be uh, sustainable. Also, Maya Alibaba can, uh, that is the analytical tool, the analytical platform that we have within, uh, um, within the seller profile, uh, can uh, support to understand the trends 
uh, we mentioned paper packaging, uh, wood packaging, but can also deep dive uh, on uh, on the different uh, 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 parts of a product, like ingredients, uh, uh, packaging, uh, and so on. Great, thank you, thank you, Mattia. And last question for today: When buyers click or purchase the item, that's when it goes to Alibaba. I feel like this is the question about where exactly Alibaba.com fits into the purchasing. <laughs> situation um ethan do you know oh sorry can you say that one more time when buyers click and purchase the item like i guess they're wondering where alibaba comes into the situation absolutely so this is where it's pretty customizable according to your business needs um if you do want to have buyers just check out on alibaba certainly doable uh, we have escrow program um, that it does cost an added one to three percent if you want to use that program but if you're familiar with bank rates that's significantly less than a typical bank or online escrow um, from there you can just check out you, we have two different types of online sales on alibaba ready to ship um, where you can kind of list it with the shipping terms involved and then someone just kind of adds to cart checks out in that system however you still have the ability to accept or deny that order so key difference uh, to say other e-commerce platforms uh, when it comes through you can still say no that's outside of my shipping radius no that's below my moq any of the sort Secondly, you can create um, terms for the agreement with the buyer uh, right within the chat system and then quote them from the um, from our system. Most sales do come through this second level where it's more of an inquiry and less of an add to cart system. So someone send you an inquiry saying, hey, you know, my name is so and so I have a business in uh, in California with 14 retail locations looking to enter negotiations for X amount of product, you can then send them a bill or take it offline. Um, if you do want to avoid those that that uh, the escrow fee, um, you can just take it offline and uh, have the purchase through PayPal, any of your systems, whatever you're used to. But uh, again, we, we can certainly modify our, our programs according to your business needs. Whatever you're used to doing, we can continue. If you want to check out our payment systems, you're more than welcome to. We're never going to dictate, though, how you have to operate on the platform. Thank you so much, Ethan. And thank you so much to Mattia and Amarjeet. Um, actually, in terms of Mattia, he will be presenting um, three more three more uh, webinars in the month of July. And then there's already one planned for August. Do you want to say anything about that before we sign off, Mattia? Also, thanks, Jessica. Next, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. East time, we will have uh, um, a webinar uh, with uh, uh, important partners uh, that are uh, key players in the B2B industry. On July 12th, uh, we will uh, have a webinar uh, on uh, revolution in design thinking with Sandra Gray that I mentioned before is uh, one of the most important uh, design uh, agency worldwide based in Paris, New York, uh, and Shanghai. On July 19th, uh, we will uh, uh, go into the future of supply chain in e-commerce and uh, we will have a US-based uh, certification company that is called Media Lab Science. And uh, on July 26th, um, we will have a webinar with Spate, with a co-founder of Spate, um, that is uh, on data analytics uh, uh, strategies. And uh, on August uh, 2nd, uh, we uh, will host a webinar with Robin Ruskin, that is the founder of VG Group. Uh, Robin uh, uh, was uh, also one of the founder of the CES in Las Vegas. And uh, we will deep dive on how an omnichannel strategy can support the seller to go global. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. If you have any further questions, there are links in the chat for where you can find Ecovia Intelligence, but also how you can either talk to Mattia or to Ethan. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Bye. Bye-bye.